Hello everybody, this is Brooke from Handmade Crafters. I'm going to show you how to make a journal. Um, looks like this, it's more of like a memory book journal. Um, I'm going to show you how to put all the stitches together, how to pull the front cover together. So yeah, stick with me. Today I'm going to be using my Sirens of the Sea kit. If you're interested in this kit or any of my other digitals, um, you can head to my store to purchase these. I will link that in the description below. You're going to need your outer spine, your hidden spine and you're going to need two of these so these are six and three quarters by nine inches this is eight and three quarter inches lengthways and it's going to be ever so slightly smaller than two and three quarter inches wide and this one is by nine so you're going to need two of these and then one each of these once you have stuck your front or back cover to your piece of paper you're going to want to use your book binding tool and you're going to want to draw around so it gives you a 15 millimeter border all the way around and then you're going to want to cut it out next you're going to want to take this piece and you're going to want to attach it onto here and then draw And then we just want to cut these corners off along the line we've just made. Now that we've covered our front and back cover, we want to go ahead and we want to glue these down on all four sides on both pieces. You're going to want to use your bone folder or some other tool, a ruler or something with a straight edge so that you can just squish down these little tiny corner pieces here. By doing this, it's going to give you a really neat corner when it comes to folding them over. When you finish covering them, you should have two pieces that look like this. To cover our spines, we have our outside spine and we have our hidden spine. Now both of these will fit onto one of these sheets of paper. Okay, You are going to want an even gap between both of them. Mark the border as you did with the covers. And now we want to just cut these out. Now we're going to do our corners again. And again, we want to cut our corners off. We're now going to glue just the top and bottom and then fold them over. We're going to leave these You want to set aside your smaller piece. So the one that's slightly shorter and the one that's slightly thinner, we're going to set that aside. We're just going to need the larger one for now. Next, you want to fold your flaps. To make it easier to figure out what's going where, I always like to put this together like I'm looking at it as the book. So I can see here this is my front cover and I can see here this is exactly how I want my back to open. So what I do as I lay this down, just like you're opening your book. Okay, and then all we're going to do is we're going to insert the spine into there. By doing that, that's going to ensure that we're not putting our back to the front and front to the back. We're going to put a little bit of glue onto here, making sure this edge here is nice and glued. 
but you don't want to go right to the edge on this side here because that will show okay and then what we do is we press this lining the tops and bottoms up when you're happy that it's lined up you want to use your hand to keep everything in place but just folding this over here and let the glue dry a little you're going to want to grab some mini clips um, something like that that can press them together and what we're going to do is now that we've glued that on so we're going to fold it over back on itself and then we're going to use those clips to just press it together at various places and then we're going to go away let that dry for a few moments and then we'll come back okay so it's been a few minutes that should be dry enough we're going to go ahead and unclip it set them aside and then we're going to repeat the process on this side And then we're going to repeat again. Okay, when this is dry, we can do the same thing. We unclip it, set those aside, and now you should have your front, back cover, and your spine all neatly in place. Next we're going to do to make our template. This is going to help us sewn our signatures and keep them straight and it's also going to help us to mark the holes within the signature just to sew it to the spine. Now the kits are printed onto A4 so what we want to do is we want to make sure that our template is the same height as our signatures. We don't want it to be the same height as our journal because if it's the same height as our journal we could end up with holes too close to the edge of our signature. We could end up having holes here and here, which would eventually rip through the pages, so we don't want that. So always make sure that your height of your template is the same height as your signatures. For the width, we want to measure it against our hidden spine. So you want to take your piece, we know that this is the correct height. We want to now measure a mark exactly the length And the width of the spine. Now that we have measured our template, what we are going to do, we're going to do a three signature journal. So to do this, we're going to fold this in half, matching up our corners. And then you just want to take your bone folder and just make that line crisp. Here is our centre line, which I shall just mark so that you can see. What we're going to do is we're going to take this edge to our centre. And then we want to repeat that process on the same side. And then open it out. Next we want to fold it in half this way. We then want to take this side and again bring it into our centre. Then we want to repeat it over here. Then what you want to do is you want to fold it in half back to where we started and you want to fold it over by about half an inch. Then you can open it out. Next we're going to take our foam mat, we're going to take our pokey tool and where all of these join, we're going to poke a little hole. And there you have it, that is your template. One final thing that I like to do is I like to put a T for top and B for the bottom. The next thing we need to do is prepare our signatures. Now the way I prepare my signatures is by gluing them back to back. You're going to want a really good PVA like archival quality 
book binding quality, really low water content glues or no water content glues. We're going to run a line of glue all the way around the edge. Okay, once we've glued around the edge, we're just going to go in a zigzagging motion across the page. And then you're going to want to fill in the gaps. When you are done, you should have an amount of glue like this across your entire page. Then what you want to do, you're going to want to grab your next piece. And the way to do this is you line up this corner here. You line up this corner. And once both corners lined up, just drop it down and just gently press. Then what you're going to want to do is grab your bone folder and with a medium to firm pressure, you're going to want to smooth it out. Now you're going to want to go in different directions. And then we're going to turn it over. And that's it. Then you're going to want to leave this to dry completely flat. You're going to want to repeat this for all of them. So all of the designs that you have, all of the ones that come in the kit, you want to stick them together like this. And then we'll come back. Now that these are dry, and they've dried flat, what we're going to do is we're going to do scoring on all of them. We're going to want to do it several times because we want to really make sure that we're coming through to the other side as we are merging two layers together. Okay, when you can see your mountain peak on the other side, you're going to want to grab your bone folder or a ruler. You want to press it up against that ridge. And with your fingers right down the bottom, so you're pressing against the bone folder, I'm just going to keep folding it up until it's about a 90 degree angle. Then what you want to do is bring it down Make sure your edges are lined up. When you're happy with where they're lined up, you just want to crease that down. Now what we're going to do is we're going to divide them into three signatures and then we're going to pick our other bits and pieces of card. Okay, so once you've gathered the supplies for all the bits you want to make your signatures, we're going to go ahead and assemble them how we'd like to. So that could be folding them in half, we can add in little envelopes, paper doilies, and then we're going to add them to our three sets of signatures. So let's do that now. Okay, once you are happy with your three signatures, and everything's where you want them to be, we can now stitch them in. So we want to grab our foam mat again. And now we want to bring in our internal spine. We're going to turn it over and we're going to write a T and a B. So again, so we know which way around we're working with. And then we're going to turn it over and we're going to place our template. Now again, we want to make sure we're paying attention to our top and our bottom. We're going to line it up. Now if you you're struggling to see, like I am a little bit here, just fold it up a tiny bit. Doesn't need to be precise, doesn't need to be particularly neat. Okay, but just so you can see where that spine is roughly sitting. So you want to make sure your ends are fairly even. And then we're just going to clip it in place. Okay, once you're happy with where that template is, we're going to bosh our holes through. Now before you start poking anything, you want to make sure that you are working on the good side, okay? So you don't want to be working on this side, you want to be making sure that template is stuck to your patterned paper, and we're going to push it through to the back. And now we're going to remove our template and our clips. So the reason I told you to do it on this side is because these are now really flat and they are smooth. 
and on this side they are bumpy and uneven. Now I prefer it this way but if you did it that way it wouldn't matter too much but it just would give a neater finish this way. So to sew our signatures in we're going to need to number. Now the easiest way I find to do this especially for demonstrating purposes we have holes one, two, three, four and five we have columns one, two, and three. Okay, so our next step is we need to grab our template and we want to kind of fold it back up in half. Now this second column is the column we will be using to mark our holes in our signatures. So we find our center, make sure everything's lined up how we want it, paying careful attention to our top and our bottom and then I like to just clip it. And then using our template, we're going to push the holes straight through into the center of our spine. And then what we're going to do is we're going to follow this center line of holes and we're going to gently push it through straight into the center of our signature, like so. We're going to do that for all of them. And you want to repeat this for all of your signatures. Then you're going to want to remove your template because we don't want to stitch that in. To measure our thread, it uses about three times. So to measure this, we're just going to go one, two, three. And then we're just going to cut it here. Next, you're going to want your book binding needle. To make stitching easier, what you want to do is mark rows 1, 2, 3, 4 and 5 and then you have columns 1, 2 and 3. What we're going to want to do is we're going to want to push our needle through into hole 3 and then we're going to want to clip it at the top here. We're going to turn our spine back over and then we're going to stitch into hole three. Once you've come all the way through hole three, we're going to go back into hole four, straight way through the signature and then into the spine. We're going to go into hole five, all the way through into the signature. Once we've come into hole five, we want to go back into hole four. Now what we want to do is we want to completely skip hole number three and we want to go down into hole two. And then from hole two, we want to go into hole one. From hole one, we want to go back into hole two. And then from hole two, we want to go back into hole three. Now that we've stitched all of our holes, we need to finish it off. So what we're going to do is we're going to unclip this. We're going to make sure that each of these tassels are either side. And then we'll just put a little blob of glue and we'll tie a knot. And we'll do that a couple of times to secure it. Clip off your ends so that they're about an inch. And then what we're going to do is that we're going to stick them down. As an extra step to ensure that we have really tight stitching, I always run a line of glue under the stitching and then leave it to dry. Now it should look like this. We're going to repeat the same stitching method for all of our signatures. And then one thing that we do want to do is just clip this signature together. This will just help you to sew the rest in so it's not not getting everywhere. If you want to add anything to the spine like this, now is the time to do it. If you want to cover up your corners, you can do that using the bits that we cut off of our spine earlier on. If you have a larger clip, you're going to want to take these off and replace it. Next you want to add a good helping of glue and then we're going to line it up so it's all straight onto your outer spine.
Once you're happy with where you've positioned it, you're going to want to clip it at the top and the bottom to secure it in place. You're going to want to hold it either side for a few minutes until it's started to adhere and apply some pressure in the centre. Next, we're going to put some glue along this and then we're going to stick it down and use our bone folder to create a nice crease. If you wish to add ribbon or lace for a tie, now's the time to do it and then stick this down. Now you want to measure two pieces of card, they're exactly the same, to fit onto your front and onto your back, and then we're going to glue it down. Once everything's dry, remove your clips from the top and the bottom, and from on here, and here you have your very own junk journal.